Hello Whovians, my name is Robert Lloyd. I'm an anthropologist, an ecologist, and an urbanist in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm going to read to you today a bit of the piece that I wrote for Alan Seiler's terrific book, Children of Time, The Companions of Doctor Who. Now, I chose to write about a character who not many people know about. He first appeared in Doctor Who magazine in the 70s, and I encountered him through a reprint that Marvel Comics did in the 80s. And I still have that comic here, 36 years later, featuring that character that I wrote about, Croton. And I'll read just uh, a little bit of my piece so you can get a sense of who Croton is and what he's all about. This is Steel Spirit. Where does our humanity live? Is it in our DNA, the shared heritage of an ancestry stretching back through primates and reptiles to life's watery origins? Is it in the electrical sparks and chemical squirts of our brain activity? Is it in our works of art and engineering, unmatched by any of the life we have so far encountered? Or is it somewhere more subtle, more fundamental, and perhaps more enduring? It's a question science fiction has asked practically since its beginning. Doctor Who took one of its earliest stabs at it with the introduction of the Cybermen, silver giants with faces like burn patient dressings, and whose ungainliness belied great strength and a weapon of deadly fire. They were, we learned, the outcome of a long process of replacement of weak mortal flesh with untiring, undying plastic and metal. In the process, they had lost all compassion, all mercy. They were built to survive and to reproduce themselves by forcing the same process on others. Implacably advancing, they squawked in flat staccato voices to assure their victims and us the viewers, you will be like us. The Cybermen proved popular adversaries for the Doctor and Company, outmatched in an audience enthusiasm only by the Daleks, themselves a dark mirror of a humanity twisted by modern processes gone horribly wrong. They returned again and again in different but consistent forms right up through the modern series. In those more recent stories, Doctor Who occasionally found room to explore the ability of the human heart, mind, and spirit to resist the grim processes of cyber conversion and retain a human connection and sense of righteousness. Yet before Yvonne Hartman did her duty for Queen and Country and Bill Potts waited for the Doctor, there was another whose will was too powerful for the horrors of the treatment. One spirit who heard the Cyberman's demand of you will be like us and insisted he would not. He was Croton, the Cyberman with a soul. So, uh, I chose Croton because I really love stories about characters who transcend their limitations, the limits that others set on them. Uh, and also just because I like uh, exposing other Doctor Who fans to characters and stories that they might not have encountered before. And I think Croton is a great example for us at this moment. As I'm recording this, the world is gripped in the COVID-19 pandemic, but it's been uh, so much fun and so inspiring to see the way technology has enabled us to connect with each other. Uh, technology like this, through which I'm speaking to you right now. We are able to come together uh, in spite of biological limitations and connect with each other through the media of our modern technology. So uh, I will invite you to get Alan's book to read the rest of my piece and the other terrific pieces about the companions of Doctor Who. And in the meantime, I want you all to stay safe, stay well, and stay human.